Hi, uh, my name is Kristen. I am with the Muse Writer Center. Uh, I am the comics teacher there and I've been teaching for about five years or so. Uh, I got started in comics very much in elementary school. I was inspired by a lot of TV shows that were on and I wanted to draw and make my own stories. Um, just kind of figured it out as I went along, um, but mostly it was a mix of like, you know, drawing on paper and then as I got uh, more into it, I started drawing on the computer. Um, and uh, there's all kinds of different like programs that you can use with that. I like to use um, a Surface Pro where I can draw directly on the screen uh, using programs like Clip Studio Paint. Um, and sort of like getting started in comics, um, really it's just all about um, the passion to wanting to tell a story and like just getting so in love with these characters that you have. And they don't even have to be your own characters. You know, if you wanted to draw a comic with Spider-Man or maybe like an anime character or anything like that, like the sky is the limit. So um, there's all kinds of different tools for it, obviously, you know, like, you know, you can do comics on paper or like, you know, said, um, you can do it on the computer. Um, you can use it just pencils, um, you can, upgrade with like markers and such too. Uh, there's all kinds of different ways to go about it. Um, in uh, in kind of getting more into it, um, I would say that the one surprise that comes with making comics is that they are actually a lot of work. <laughs> uh, so imagine, you know, you've taken the time to draw like a really nice picture and you're really proud of that and it took you a long time. Um, now multiply that by, you know, a hundred because <laughs> you're having to make like a, a picture uh, for every like panel um, that you're trying to tell the story with. So basically to say that like uh, in your pursuit of comics, I would recommend uh, starting out small, maybe making something that's only like 10 pages or so. Um, and then from there to get like more enraptured with like your big epics and that kind of thing to see like what really works for you. Um, so today I'm going to do like uh, just a couple of demonstrations. I'm going to do one that's a little bit more simple, straightforward, a um, little bit more basic, and then we'll go into one that uh, is slightly more in depth and a little bit more, not experimental, but you can see like a lot more things that you can do with comics. Um, so let's get started. So, uh, so starting out, basically the thing that I kind of want to get accomplished with this is something emulating something that you would see out of like a Sunday, uh, Sunday newspaper, like those Sunday comics where it's very straightforward. You have your characters in boxes and it's like, you know, you read it like A, B, C style, um, just um, left to right. Very simple, again, like straightforward. Um, and this little story. I'm just going to have a little cat that wakes up. And uh, after he wakes up, he has a little yawn and just goes back to sleep. <laughs> uh, so we have like little features here um, where we can help indicate like what's going on. We have like little Z's um, that are showing that he's asleep. So that's a feature that you pretty much only see like in pictures when you're trying to convey somebody's asleep. They go, you know, ZZZ next to them. Uh, you also have uh, a big yawn here um, to show that, you know, he's uh, um, like, it's kind of like your sound effects, basically. These are ways that you can help convey sound in your story without actually hearing it. Um, and also uh, you have little speech bubbles here. Um, speech bubbles are like how you can have your character talking, so to say. So you have your text inside of a little bubble and then it's directing to them so that you can see what they're saying. And then uh, also kind of like little action uh, lines as well. Uh, these little um, small marks to show him plopping onto the ground. So uh, there you go. Um, very simple, straightforward. Again, you have your boxes that are pretty much at level with each other. And then you have like, you know, your little speech bubbles and your sound. Uh, your sound effects and the little action lines and there you go you know you've, you've made a comic um so again that one this one kind of here pretty straightforward uh 
and you can even do this with stick figures. I, you know, drew this with like a little cat, but the beauty of comics is, is that it, um, you can have a stick figure in a box to full rendered illustrations with maybe some text and boom, man, they're both comics. So there you go. It's actually kind of freeing in that regard. The sky is basically the limit and the bar is low. <laughs> so um, that will be our first example. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go into a little bit more in-depth version over here. For this one, I'm going to use prompts to kind of create uh, whatever we're going to do on this piece of paper. So the first one is we're going to figure out what setting we're in. I'm just going to go ahead and draw the first one off the top. We got a ruin. All right, so our setting that we're going to be doing for our comic is in some kind of ruin. Now we're going to figure out um, some character traits. So I'm going to pick the first two here and whatever these are, um, we'll have to define kind of like what our character is like. So um, the character will have tree or plant attributes, which is really interesting in a ruined area. Um, and they'll also have jungle animal attributes again. Very interesting for like a ruined area that's not supposed to have any like life in it. So that makes me automatically think I'm going to have some kind of character who um, like survived some kind of apocalypse or drought or something like that in his world. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna figure that out as we go. So a little bit more involved um, than the last one, um, as said. So essentially what we have going on here is a variation of like different panel sizes. Um, we have a character who's even outside of a panel. We got captions. Uh, captions are where um, you're going to have a character narrating what's going on or you can have it like established where you are, all kinds of things. Um, so essentially the story um, that I went going with was like a like a kind of a cat character who has like this little staff that he uses for walking and it's like blooming and there's like a whole uh, kind of post-apocalyptic setting that he's in and he's uh, looking for this person that he knows is alive because these little flowers on his staff are blooming um, so that's how I decided to use the tree slash plant attributes slash you know a character with like you know some jungle characteristics uh i made him like a little wild cat um and then the the ruins so uh yep um my whole strategy here essentially was um marking everything up in pencil first um then going back over um with a darker pen um then finally uh coloring it and erasing some of the pencil um, but yeah, we are going to provide a kit for you now, um, for you to do something um, for yourself. Um, if you want to keep it simple, if you want to go a little more crazy, it's up to you. Um, but so we'll have some pencils, we'll have the markers, and we'll have little copies of these cards to kind of get you started there. And there you go. Thanks for joining me. Uh, once again, my name is Kristen from the News Writer Center, and have fun. Hello, I am Mr. Corey, and welcome to another Cosmic Summer program. Uh, today we are doing a comic craft. Uh, we are going to be making keychains and uh, magnets. 
So using these um, bits of cardboard that I have here, these thick pieces of cardboard, um, and some images of some different comic covers like these ones, we are gonna be making the keychains and magnets. So uh, if you had signed up for uh, the kit, uh, you should get three of the little cardboard tiles and then um, a whole bunch of the different comic book covers uh, as well as some Mod Podge uh, that we'll use to attach it and uh, some keychains and some magnet tape. So uh, for the keychain one, uh, you can take and put uh, a comic cover on both sides of the, the cardboard tile. So for this one, I have, let's see, I have a Captain Marvel and a Avengers cover. So I'm gonna glue the two of them up there. So I'm gonna put a little bit of Mod Podge on the cardboard tile and then spread it out. You don't need uh, a lot of it, just enough to uh, sort of uh, glaze it, give it like a, a thin layer uh, so that uh, the image will stick to it, but not so much that like it's dripping with the Mod Podge. So you're going to put it up there, press it up there. Okay, and then um, I'm gonna use uh, a pencil. You just need something uh, sort of thin and pointy to like puncture uh, the image where the hole is. So I'm just gonna do that. And now I'm gonna put the back side up there, my Avengers number one cover. Now, of course, you don't have to use the comic covers. If you uh, want to make a, a tiny little drawing and then cut that out, you can use that instead. Or uh, you could just take some paint and paint uh, the little cardboard tiles and then uh, paint them whatever color you want. So, like, you can do pretty much whatever uh, with this. Do it, like, different ways. So now I'm going to puncture it again. And uh, you might uh, need help doing this part. Uh, it might be best to have, like, if you have a, a parent or guardian nearby to, like, poke the hole in there to make sure uh, you still have the hole for the keyring. If you're doing the keyring one. If you're not doing the keyring and you're doing the magnet one, it doesn't matter if you cover it up then. But, um, so yeah, so now I have my images glued up there and the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take the Mod Podge and I'm going to put a little bit on top of the images. Um, so the Mod Podge will act as like a sealant, it will keep the paper from uh, ripping and coming off. And it will give it like a nice uh, little layer of protection up there. Uh, but when you do this, you can only do like one side at a time because like you have to like let it sit and dry for a second. So I'm just going to do the Avenger side for right now and then I'm going to move on and show you how to do the magnet. So let's leave that to dry for a second and we'll go and start our magnet one. So I have this Thor cover. It's pretty cool. So I'm going to take him, a little Mod Podge and glue him up there. Okay, so after uh, I've taken and put uh, my Thor cover up there, I'm going to flip it over and take my piece of magnet tape and I'm going to put a little bit of Mod Podge on the back of the cardboard tile and then I'm going to stick the magnet tape up there white side down. I'm just going to press it up there, 
and set it down and let it dry. Uh, the Mod Podge dries pretty quickly, so once that dries, uh, you'll be set with your magnet. So now I have a, a cool Thor magnet. But we can go back to the keychain. So now that the first side has dried, we have like a nice little protective layer of Mod Podge on the cover, and that will help uh, keep it from peeling off or scuffing. Then we can go back and put a little bit on the other side. And then lastly, we will take our uh, key rings and we'll insert them in the hole. And we also have like a second key ring that you can like attach it to. So that is our craft for today. We have our comic keychain and our comic magnet. Uh, so yeah, so I hope you guys enjoy it and continue to check out the rest of our Cosmic Summer programming. We have a lot of cool stuff coming up this week, so definitely check it out and see what's going on. And I will see you around.